The primary objective of our new project is to harness the power and energy of line. For example, in this self-portrait, Katkovich used a zigzagging line in a raw and visible way to express the energy of the artist's arm. It also created a metaphorical link between the head and hand. Similar to musical beats which lead listeners through time, artists repeat lines to create visual rhythms that carry viewers through the space of a picture. In this work titled Sarah and Her Mother with the Baby, artist Mary Cassatt used a sketchy visual beat throughout the work to create a sense of harmony that unifies the various areas. The line work in the mother's shoulder feels improvised and adds a burst of energy to an area that might otherwise feel bland and uneventful. Jeffrey Chadsey also uses a line in ways that adds visual interest. In addition to being rhythmic, his line work reinforces the illusion of three-dimensional form. Notice how Chadsey wraps the masses of the body with cross-contour lines, especially in the chest cavity. These lines move up and down in ways that suggest the topographical surfaces of the torso. Here is another example by Chadsey. This portrait by Casey Zavaglia was embroidered with thread. The thread itself is a kind of thin line. From a distance, the very fine thread work feels more like a texture. However, as you get closer to her works, the threads reveal a more linear character. For example, when we move closer, we can see the line work in the red coat, as well as in the face and the neck. Because Zavaglia uses embroidery, which is stitched through the canvas, her works have an interesting backside image too. The back of a painting is called the verso. Zavaglia exhibits both sides of her works and showcases the frenzy of line work on the back side of her portrait. How would you contrast the character of the line work on the two sides of her work? On one side, it's tight and controlled, while the other is loose and chaotic. Do you have a favorite side? Zavaglia's fondness for the more random back side of her embroidered portraits inspired her to make a series of large paintings of them. Painting the verso is an example of how artists examine and re-examine their process and push expectations. This painting, Rocco Verso, where Zavaglia omits the lower part of the face, certainly challenges what we are expecting to see in a portrait. Here you can see the artist with two small embroidered portraits on the one side and a large painting of a verso on the right. In addition to creating visual rhythms, line is an effective tool for guiding the viewer's eye through a work of art. In this collage by Justine Camara, the artist's use of line leads our eye both inward and outward. Line can also be an important component in the overall design of a work. In this painting, Kahindi Wiley creates a linear theme by repeating the line of the cane with the stripe on the subject's leg. The forearms and the wrinkles in the white t-shirt become thematic variations. Ultimately, Wiley's choices creates a sense of visual structure in the work. In The Boy with No Past, Amy Sherald's use of line creates visual structure in her work. Notice how the stripes of the shirt are repeated in the lines of the pants. The directional theme is also echoed in the posture of the subject, which is straight and very upright. Finally, here's a recap of what you read in the open and closed form PDF, which I uploaded to Blackboard. Look at how these two photos differ in composition. The left side is a closed composition. The pairs are centrally placed, surrounded by a relatively even amount of space. None of the pairs extends beyond the picture frame. The compositional form feels like a staged event and evokes a sense of distance between the viewer and the subject matter. However, it also provides a sense of neatness and order. In contrast, the right side is an open composition. The pairs are cropped in a way that suggests they continue beyond the picture frame. The picture is asymmetrically bounced. The spaces between the frame and the pairs are greatly varied compared to the composition on the left. The crop gives a viewer a sense of being within the scene as opposed to outside of it, looking in. This results in a psychological closeness. It's important that you know the difference between these two compositional strategies as they relate to a secondary objective in your project. So, be sure to read that project description carefully.